Our speaker today is Alina Bashiro. She is a Reese MA student. Um, she's also a GRA for Professor Romello. She does uh, Minerva uh, project. She does research uh, for that grant as well. Her an undergraduate work was completed at Moscow State University in journalism, and as part of that, uh, well, as, as a subsequent to that, she's actually worked as a professional journalist in Russia uh, before starting her master's degree here. Uh, she spent time in Ukraine at a critical uh, you know, point uh, for Euromaidan, and uh, as a result of that, had several conversations with young people there. I think that's the subject of her talk today. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bart. Okay, hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, actually, I don't know what attracted you to the talk, a uh, documentary topic or conversation about the relationship between Russia and Ukraine, but I'm interested in both of these topics, so I will try to cover them. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about Kyiv and my previous history. I studied at the Moscow State University in the journalism department from 2010 to 2015. My specialization was TV journalism, and I was interested in coverage of political and economical areas. So to be in Kyiv during Euromaidan was important and interesting for me as a citizen and as a journalist. And also, it wasn't my first time in the city, so I just wanted to be there during that difficult time. I always had a premonition that I would like Kyiv before I was there for the first time. I remember one time our department received money from the university, and we had a choice. We could choose any directions, considering the amount of money, and we created created an online survey among our course. Uh, we had two main directions, Kyiv and Minsk. I voted for Kyiv because I even couldn't find a reason to choose between them. I remember that one of my classmates who voted for Minsk, he pers um, she persuaded us saying that we will go to Kyiv anyway in the future, but not to Minsk. And how wrong she was about future if now we speak about the revolution. However, with uh, minimum advantage, Minsk won. Uh, but actually, we didn't go anywhere because the university did not give the department money. But even we didn't go, I thought about why I voted for Kiev. And I answered that it's a beautiful city, and I thought that I liked the description of Kiev by Bulgakov. But to be honest, I even didn't read the White Guard at that time yet. So I just had a feeling that I should go to the city. And with my friend, uh, we planned to go somewhere on May's holidays three years ago. She liked the idea to go to Ukraine. And we, go, and we went to Kyiv and spent there five days. And we found the city beautiful and charming, even after Europe and after Moscow. I remember that uh, when we were going back from uh, Kyiv to Moscow, on the 9th of May. It was a big salute at that evening, uh, the day of victory. I loved the city, and before my done, I was there many times. Uh, I think that people there in Kyiv, they have strong connection with their motherland, and I think that Kyiv is the true home city. I can say that I was a little bit jealous because of it. When I think that when you are young, you look at your life like a game, and usually you are surprised when the game becomes a big part of your life, a big part of your biography, and influences your future. And I felt the same when I was thinking about the revolution, how it was beginning, how it developed, and how all things changed very quickly. That time, almost all people in Russia began to speak about Euromaidan, and TV began to speak about the situation a lot. And it means that I spoke about Ukraine almost every day, but I was glad. Now, a little bit about the film, why I did it. Officially, I created the film because I had a homework for my documentary class in the journalism department. But honestly, I just wanted to do it. I wanted to speak with people about what happened to understand it better and to film these events. I went in Kyiv uh, in March of 2014 when the situation escalated and when many people were killed in the center of the city. Uh, I found uh, 
part of the people um, to film through the internet in the social network Vkontakte. In groups devoted Euromaidan, there I found people in Kyiv, and in groups devoted to Anti-Maidan, there I found people from Moscow. Also, I knew two of my characters a long time before these events, and these people just asked their friends to come, and that is how I found the people. So, I had people and plays, but I didn't have certain plan how to film these people. I created a scenario and I wrote many questions and many topics I wanted to speak about. So, I conducted interviews with them, I went for a walk to Maidan, I uh, made a video of them together and also I just followed them through the town with my camera. By the way, before I had an idea to make uh, a film about a teenager who participated in these events and you know, to make a story how, who, how he became psychologically older after these events. However, being in Moscow, I just didn't find the character in Kyiv and I decided to record people I found. Uh, during the shooting process, I spoke with my characters about what happened because I wanted to understand what happened and what they thought about it. After our class of documentary in the journalist department and after this filming process, I opened main rules for young directors I don't want to call myself a director because all I did in this field is just this first trial, but I think I can do it because of many documentary films I have watched. So I want to show you these rules. First one, to create a good film, you need to believe that these events and these words must be protocoled and saved, understand why you want to make the film, and be really involved and interested in what you cover. I think that the first three rules are the most important for creation of a film because if you know why you are doing it, if you think about the topic a lot, you should make a film about it. And uh, you need to read a lot about the issue and know how, how to use this knowledge. And I think usually people see it. They see when you really leave the story. You need to have the main idea and theme. Here you should remember that documentary film is art and it's not just collection of video and you should have a message or an idea and your audience should want to think about the topic after the film. For example, when you make a film about some person, usually it's not a film just about the person, usually it's a film about some social group or historical group because he represents these groups and he can represent even a time period. Uh, you need to be sure that this is important and other people should watch it. I felt that young generation must say something because they were a big part of the masses who participated in these events. Uh, you need to like people who you film. Put your characters to unusual situations to open real emotions. What I did, I asked all my characters to meet because uh, some of them did not know each other before. So it was important to put them in unusual situation and so they could speak with new people and introduce their positions. And second, I often told them something contrary to their positions just to look at their emotions. Uh, I wanted to create a discussion and so even when I was agreeing with them, I took the opposite side. And now I want to show you two videos, how it was in my film, like how I did it. Problem earlier, folks. One second as we. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
будет следующим, который начнет говорить о том, что это все а, было спонсировано в штате и его. Там сначала построили огромный прибушек, который, к сожалению, не стрелял. А вот потом они построили такие рогатки, только очень большие. А где я застрял? Они же построили там огромные несколько линий баррикад. Построили вот такие вот большие рога. Использовали их до последнего, в принципе. Трибушет, да? Да. Это да. разновидность протокола. Трибушет — это средневековое устройство, изобретенное, по в XIV веке, там, найдено в XIV веке. Когда мы говорим катапульта, как правило, мы имеем в виду именно трибушет, потому что трибушет — это катапульта, которая работает под действием противовес. Большой, э, маленькое плечо, э, катакульт опускается с груза, верхнее плечо выкидывается на это верх. Меня не столько интересует прибушет, сколько это фраза о том, что ее пытались сорвить, но, к сожалению, она не стреляла. Mm -hmm. То есть, с той стороны, ну и я с Риной уже двойня в жизни, mm -hmm. там все равно стояли те же украинцы. И mm -hmm. я знаю военнослужащих, которые там стояли по несколько суток, Просто там есть, были 18-летние пацаны, призывники, да. их призвали осенью, их выгнали да. на мороз, они стояли, и в них бросали там да. камни, все. Да, я да. К сожалению, не выстрелил. К сожалению, да. Ты по-прежнему придерживаешься мнения, что она, к сожалению, не выстрелила. So on the next video it happened naturally because they did it now each other before and they wanted to introduce their positions. What I did else uh, to open their real emotions? I, um, I filmed outside more, so my characters needed to go somewhere to show me something, uh, to be among other people. And also the last one, I tried to do something they didn't expect. And I will show you the video. There, uh, my character told me that uh, his mother and all relatives on her side are from Moscow region, from Azure city. And I presented him with magnet for refrigerator from the city. I knew it before, so I prepared. And this way you can uh, stop them from acting because all people try to play roles in front of camera. So he really didn't expect it, and you can see how his face was changed. Um, think about the composition of a film. You need to have some principles which create a structure of your film. You can uh, divide your film on chapters about different people or about different events. I divided my film on chapters about different people. Uh, leave the story with the people. Often directors begin to participate uh, in the story. For example, documentary film Anton is right here. The director adopted uh, the sick boy she made a film about. Or, for example, you can make a film about your own life. Vitaly Mansky, almost, um, I mean, also Russian director, he created a film about his classmates uh, from his school in Lvov. 
Sometimes uh, films influence characters. For example, film Born in the USSR, uh, lives of lives of characters had been changed after the film. However, also it's a big question of ethics. Does the director have a right to influence the situation? For example, Georgian documentary film Under the Open Sky told audience about uh, homeless people and one of them died in the end of the film and cinema team could help him but they didn't because they didn't want to change the reality because in this case it would not be a real documentary. Uh, next one. Make uh, as much video as you can. Remember that even though it's a documentary, it's a film and uh, people should watch it with interest, so you need to introduce it and tell a story. Create a scenario, again, even though it's a documentary, you need to have a scenario and you need to have uh, some plan where you want to film these people. Think about the picture and how it looks like, change of shots. Uh, you need, uh, through a film, you need to change uh, shots you use. Uh, sometimes of the shots include distance shot, medium shot, uh, close up and detail. Uh, and you need to change the, uh, them every time. Also, you need to ask your characters to move, to show you something, to go somewhere. Because you need to have uh, a movement in a frame and alternate uh, moving and static shots. Mm -hmm. Next one. Uh, use symbols and show different sides of the issue. Use symbols. As a symbol, I use the chestnut tree because for me it's a symbol of Kiev and I show different stages of its blossom. And you need to repeat uh, your image uh, during your film. I will show you how it was in my film. <laughs> Also, you need to think about transitional shots because you need to put something between parts or chapters of your film. So, for example, something like this. But sometimes uh, transitional shots can be found accidentally, like here. Okay, next. Okay, next one. Um, show different sides of the issue. As I said, I found people from Kyiv and I also found people from Moscow because I wanted to compare their words and their thoughts. Also, I have one character, he is a Canadian and uh, it was interesting for me to listen to another opinion. And the last one, um, make as much, as much video as you can. It's something like number 10. And in the next video, uh, you can see that I did a lot of video. Uh, now I will show you video with music, now a little bit about music. Uh, you need to have permission from musical bands if you use uh, their music in your film. I used one song of Akian Elzi in my Russian long version film of, uh, long version of the film. 
Uh, and YouTube sent me a message where they said that it could be blocked, but it still works on YouTube. I don't know why. Uh, and you can use any music without permission uh, of musician as long as, as it has been 70 years since his death. So you just need to check the rules before you use some soundtrack in your film. Now I will show you the video. And again, you can see how much video I did. So I used this song in lo a long version of my film and I didn't reinvent the wheel here. It's always a good choice to put some bright shots of your film and accompany them with music. However, I think that you don't need to use, uh, I mean, to focus on these points all the time. The most important is to think about your characters and your story. Now let's speak a little bit about uh, Russian documentary. I will tell you about some uh, documentary films and projects in today's Russia. First one, Art Dog Fest. Art Dog Fest is the most influential uh, documentary festival in Russia. It happens every year. Vitaly Mansky is a famous uh, documentary director and he is a president of the festival. Um, there are many uh, films by young directors, so if you want to watch the newest uh, Russian documentary films, you should look at the program of the festival. Next one, Realness Dog. Uh, Realness Dog is a project of three journalists, Alexander Starguyev, Alexey Pivovarov and Pavel Kostomarov. Their idea was um, to choose ordinary people who want to participate and give them cameras to film their lives. After that, they collected all materials and created many short videos. So this way they created many videos about different events, demonstrations, and including Euromaidan. I want to show you just one episode of one of the uh, videos. <laughs> So the video is made by an ordinary Russian girl in Russia and it just shows her reality. And there are many videos from important events, from demonstrations, and one character even went to the east of Ukraine. So you can find <coughs> all their videos on their official YouTube channel, Realness Dog. Next one. Uh, film Anton is right here. It's a documentary and it's an example uh, when films become a part of um, reality. Lyubov Arkus created a film about an autistic boy and she, uh, he, he was abandoned and she during the filming process, which was more than one year, adopted the boy. 
next one. Uh, born in the USSR. Uh, Ser uh, the director of the film is Sergei Mirshnichenko. The idea of the film is to make a video of the same people every seven years. It was not uh, a new idea, it was concept from England. Uh, the first one released in 1990 and it shows 18 children from the time they were seven and the last one shows them in 2012 when they were 28. So story of Russia, fall of Soviet Union, revolutions and change of presidents are shown in <coughs> parallel with their lives. And uh, you remember we spoke how films influenced the situation and Sasha, Sasha is one of the characters. His life was changed after the first episode of the film. In the first episode he was a child in a, a children's home, but after the film he was adopted by American <coughs> family. <coughs> However, the relationship with the family was difficult and he changed a family in America. Uh, the director of the film is Sergei Mirishnichenko. Uh, he says that he will die sooner than his characters, so he prepared his daughters to finish the project uh, till the death of all characters in the film. Um, okay, in general, you need to think uh, how to save the reality in your film and create a film as objective as possible, and it's a good for documentary if after many years people will, will watch the film and they will understand what happens at time. Of course you need to try to create something that by your opinion deserving to stay uh, in a history of documentary and something that you can name it art. Now I will show you just a fragment of my film because I think it's uh, incorrect to speak a lot about the film without showing it. serious and so it's very somber lots of flowers and candles and stuff like that and obviously people were very sad and shocked sort of for the first uh, few days after the violence and now I think everything since then uh, everything's been taken much more seriously because uh, now people realize that nobody's kidding <laughs> Стоит ли меня? Вот это, 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 вот
Это при том даже, что там сидеть этих семинаров, просто Я считаю, что на этот вопрос ответит в следующем выходе. Да, история время ответит. У людей, у людей как бы вот этот вот барьер, что Россия на нас не нападет, он упал. И поэтому началось так. Вдруг оказалось, что Россия на нас напала и захватила там, автономную республику. Вот. И когда барьер падает, начинается паника. Окей, спасибо. Теперь я открою вопросы.